why is it necessary that entrepreneurs exist and continue to extend ourselves beyond where we're currently at? Why is that necessary in your mind? Oh man, this is so good. Wow, we're jumping right into it. I'm going to go two different directions. One, I'm going to start with kind of the negative. If we don't, if entrepreneurs don't exist, we are just crossing our fingers and hoping that the big corporations are going to do the right thing. Tell me when that worked out for us. Tell me how that's working out for us today. To put that trust in the big players that it's not just going to be about money, that they have our best in thoughts and needs in their mind. Ouch. But more yeah. importantly than that, big businesses, it's, it takes time for them to innovate. They have gone on a path. They make money a very specific way. Innovation is not always their friend. Yeah, you can think of the great Teslas and Apples of the world, but those are actually the minority. The majority is, hey, this is the way we do things. And all we're going to do is actually we're going to grind down our costs even worse. Oh, you guys don't mind us using slave labor? Well, we're going to make it even worse now. Entrepreneurs are so necessary to keep people honest and to invent and to hear what the world says and goes, hey, we really need more of this. We need people doing it with integrity. We need people caring about our health and then immediately showing up with solutions. And that excites me so much. I mean, that's, that's who I've been my whole life. I see these issues and I never wanted to be one of these guys that just complains. Oh, you know what's wrong with this, Mark, and this, and this, and this business? Okay, well, what are you going to do about it? And then I not only vote with my dollars, which led, we're going to be talking about that today. I think it's so yeah. important that people realize you are voting with your dollars so don't just say, oh, I'm, I'm so against them using slave labor. Oh, really? So where do you pick up your groceries? Well, I mean, I have to still buy them. No, vote with your dollars. But then more importantly, those people who are like, I feel like I should be starting a business to do this, to combat this, to create this solution. Please, I'm begging you. Please. I feel, like, I feel like you just gave us an intro into the book that can be pre-ordered now about playing a bigger game yeah buddy you know it so break down the idea of the book and entice us to go out and spend our you said vote with our money yes entice us to make a vote with our money on buying your book and the impacts it can have our on our life the mindset the thought process of it oh man thank you for this so first of all it is play a bigger game it's the seven universal principles to help you experience real fulfillment and to win at life this book was written for so many people who have this calling, like they know, they're listening to me right now and they're like, I think he's talking to me. I've got something inside of me that says I should be playing a bigger game in life. There's more to life than what I'm experiencing. I haven't, I haven't experienced the good life, the excitement in life, the passion that I did when I was in my 20s. I'm here to tell you, there is more for you. You can experience that every single day of your life. You have to take some action. You have to make some moves. A great first start, and I'm not just selling it, is go buy the book. The book not only explains to you all the steps I took, all the mindset tools that I have in my chamber that I use on a daily, the perspective shifts, but most importantly, in my opinion, I have challenges all throughout the book that say, hey, stop reading right now and try this. Without taking action, nothing will change. So if you feel stuck in life, and I promise you, I felt stuck for so many years. I was on such a crappy path. I was looking at my path going, there has to be more than this. This, this is going to be a suck life if I have to just keep doing this. So I want to tell you, I have so much mercy for you. I have been there, and I put up with that for so many years. And then I started taking action. And these are the exact actions I took. And if you take them, I am so confident you will experience the same success. It won't necessarily mean the same dollars and cents, but you'll experience the same fulfillment. You can instantly change the way you see the world. It will bring you more joy. It will bring you more excitement. You'll live with more passion. You will enjoy the things of your life more than you enjoy them today. So I guess an argument could be made as I'm sitting here talking about the passion coming out, you just describing the book, but it's almost the person that you would become 
from taking the approach that you're laying out, that person is capable of compounding dollars and cents if that is one of the end goals. Yes, I love that. I love that. And it's not even just the end goal because a lot of us mm -hmm. do this. We go, yeah, that if I become that person, I get it. You know, if I have that kind of money, I get it. I'll have the kind of success and happiness and whatever you're talking about. What's exciting is it's the journey. The mm -hmm. journey for who you will become mm -hmm. along the way to reach those goals, that's where the juice in life is. And that's what I'm here to help people see. If you start taking steps on this journey, it's not this thing that's so far away and I don't even know where to start. Yeah, you do. And I will help you and I will push you and I will keep you accountable so that you just start taking those steps. And then each day you can look back and go, wow, I took a few good steps. I am not the same person I was yesterday. And we'll celebrate together. This world doesn't celebrate enough. We need to mm -hmm. pat ourselves on the back once in a while. Don't just look at social media and go, well, look how much further they are. I mean, I'm, no, I'm nowhere near there. I've only worked out a few times. You worked out a few times. It's phenomenal. The you a month ago couldn't even imagine somebody who worked out three times in a week. So we're going to celebrate that together. Yeah. So we talk about this idea touches on the idea that, hey, com the, the idea of comparing yourself to others is a thief of joy. I believe in that. Is it okay to compare ourselves against maybe our previous self, the person I was yesterday, the person I don't want to be? Like, how can we play that game? What, where can that Is that healthy? Oh, man. Mark, what beautiful questions. 100% I agree with this. One, don't compare yourself to others. There's, there's no win there. There is zero win. You are a unique snowflake, a unique unicorn on this planet. You absolutely should compare yourself to who you were yesterday. And I'm going to give a new spin on something here. You know, we've all heard, yeah, but you should love yourself who you are today. I only just fully understood that sentence in the last 60 days because I always saw, I, I saw a big problem with this. I, you know, it sounds so foofy. It sounds like this hippie, like, ah, oh, go hug a tree. Like you got to just love yourself for who you are. Here's what I see as, as the difference for me now. I can love myself for who I am today without getting complacent with who I am today. Mm. See, I love so myself good, so much that I know what I'm capable of. And I'm going to lovingly push myself and support myself to know that tomorrow I'm going to be better because I can and I should. And this world and all the people around me, my family, my network, my community, my country, this world needs me to become the best version of myself. So yes, I can love myself without just going, so it's okay. Go sit on the couch, Marcus. You're good. You're good the way you are. And I it's think so there's good, a lot man. of high achievers who struggle with that, right? That's why I had such a problem with that. Oh, so that gives me the license to do nothing because I'm fine without, no, no. You have so much potential. Love yourself enough to do something with it. Where did this journey start for you? Mm. I had to hit rock bottom. I was 15 years old when I hit rock bottom and I feel so blessed that I got to have those crappy years early. And by the way, I consider every year of my life a major blessing. Even though there were so many crappy years, there was so much challenge that I went through. And one of the greatest victories that I've had in my life is not just accepting that that stuff happened, but being truly grateful for those years. Because if you, if you always see this as like, ah, oh, man, Mark, I've got all this baggage with me. I'm not going to do that well in life because you, you don't understand what I went through. And listen, I appreciate right now so many people going, Marcus, you don't understand what I went through. I know. I bet so many people had it way worse than me. But I can tell you so confidently, you are capable of seeing those things as gifts. And what if, what if, all of that stuff that you think is baggage, that you, that you had to struggle through, those challenges, those challenging years, those challenging times, what if that was actually a blessing? I know that's a hard thing to wrap your mind around, but if you can start to come up with answers, here are some of the answers that it changed my life because of the divorce that happened, that I had to go through, because I was raised without a father around, because my mother had to go back to school full-time and work full-time, and I didn't have a mother in my life as much as I would have liked to, I became the parent that I am today. 
I'm obsessed with my little girls. I became the husband that I am today. I'm obsessed with my wife. We, we, we celebrate 20 years this year. That is the greatest woman on the planet. She is the gift, the greatest gift God has ever given me. So there's so much I can take from that. Because of all that, I became the independent man that I am. I'm strong. I've got work ethic. See how you can turn that into your super strength? And if you do that, you'll recognize that you were created so unique on this planet to be uniquely you. And the world needs you to be uniquely you with all of your warts and all of your scars. And it's because of those scars. That's your origin story. Man, if you like the superhero movies, you had to go through that to become the Wolverine, to become Deadpool. So I embrace it that way. And when you do, oh my goodness, the way that you're going to recognize opportunities in front of you, it's incredible. Yeah.